Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Bebe Kumi. And today, I have a, a very special guest. What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I have Christopher Suarez here with, with us. The, let's say, the guy of number 10? Yeah. Yeah? One of them? One of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, we're, uh, we're a nice little group, but yeah, one of them. One of yeah, them, nice, sure. man. Um, so today he brought us, a, he's a, let's say, a gen enthusiast. A gin lover? Definitely <laughs> so, man. Gin all the way. <laughs> so today, of course, I have my lovely friend, the Sir Admins, and he brought some... So yeah, these are my personal favorites. I mean, the Bobby's is just because it's super spicy. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what we drink. When you okay. come into number 10, you look up, I'm pretty sure you see like 20 <laughs> or 30 empty bottles there. Um, and then the Gin Mare, just the Gin Mare is so easy to mix with pretty exactly. much anything. Um, has a very neutral flavor, mm -hmm. um, so it's just an easy sipper. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, I love the Gen Marin. It's a Spanish one, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like yeah. it. Uh, nice, nice to have you on the podcast. No, man. thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm super excited to be here, and uh, I look forward to uh, yeah. where this session is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make something out of it. No worries. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to start off with which one would you like first? Um, you know what? Let's. What do you think? Gen Mari, we start off yeah, easy. Yeah, we start with Gen Mari. We'll start going up into the yeah. flavor profile. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let's start with the Gen Mari. Perfect. What do you think is the best? I got some cinnamon. I brought oranges. I have some limes. Um, the Gen Mari goes well with pretty much anything. anything so. so I think if we're going to use. Uh, let's do the orange. The orange? orange? And, yeah. Because then I'm going to use the orange for the bobbies too. Yeah, perfect. I and brought then, some cloves as well. So oh. you can pop that in there. Oh, there you game go. prepared. Hell yeah. Man. <laughs> if you're a gin lover, you got to come prepared, right? <laughs> yeah, no, the gin mare just, it's, it's so nice, um, especially in, in, in cocktails as well, because it's like so neutral. Um, so yeah, especially in drinks like The Last Word, what I'm a fan of, it just, it just, just adds a little bit of oomph. Yeah. <laughs> So I get you. Let me get some ice. Perfect. There you go. Thank you. And the lovely tonic, uh, double Dutch. Double Dutch tonic. Yeah. Love it. You know, one of the things that I really like about gin is there is so much that you can combine it with. So there's so many different tonic flavors. There's so many different ingredients. Um, and each pairs well with a specific gin yeah. or with a specific tonic, vice versa. So it's, 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 I think it's such an introduction to alcohol and to yeah. drinking because it's so easy for everyone to find something that they like. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers man. man. Yeah. Prost. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Do you have that in my just think my second one? There we go. There we go. Yeah, man. So, um, we prosed. We got the Jin Mara started. So let's get right into it. Um, where were you born? So uh, I was born here in Curacao. Yeah. Um, 1992, baby. Uh, <laughs> 90s. You yeah, old. yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was born here in Curacao. Um, Lived here all my life mm -hmm. until I was 19, and then I moved abroad to study. Yeah. Um, I moved to Canada. Yeah. I didn't really want to fit into the norm where, you know, in Curacao, everyone goes to, to Holland, Holland. Yeah. and it just didn't seem right for me. Yeah. I, I wanted something different. Um, I wanted to go to the States, but unfortunately, that was a little bit out of our price range. Gotcha. Um, so Canada came up. My, my dad was born in Canada. So oh, nice. I have a Canadian passport, oh. so that made the tuition a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. So yeah, so I ended up in Canada, did a, uh, did a tour there on one of the campuses, fell in mm -hmm. love right away, and so yeah, this is where I want to go. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and then about four years back, uh, moved back to Curacao, and here we are. Yeah, but... Which school did you st you went to before you went to Canada? So I uh, I 
from baby, no, not baby, but from a young, like I did uh, Albert Schweitzer. Yeah. So Ooh. Albert Schweitzer Basis School. Yeah, oh, there we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I went to Albert Schweitzer Basis, and then yeah. um, I, my when I went to the middle middle Basis School, mm-hmm. so middle school or high school, yeah. um, I did one year at Fispucci. Okay. Um, I wasn't the best student. No, I, no uh, judgment there. Yeah. <laughs> no worries, man. Um, so I wasn't really doing as well there. I didn't enjoy it there because mm-hmm. it's such a sm- small private school. Yeah. Um, and so uh, my sister, who was a year younger than me, um, decided to go to Peter Stuyvesant. Okay, yeah. So in my second year, I said, okay, let me go to Peter Stuyvesant too. And Try it out. And so, yeah, so I did half what Peter Stuyvesant. Mm-hmm. Enjoyed it. And then when I graduated... Um, Peter Stuyvesant, so high school. Yeah, I went to a year. I went did a year at UDC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and you didn't like that much. Uh, I, was it it like was it was more of a of a middle. Like I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. Gotcha. Um, I studied uh, uh, physics, mm-hmm. so at least like, I did the physics route. So yeah. nature um, and technique, mm-hmm. um, and I I loved it, but I didn't see what I was going to do with it. Gotcha. Um, my uh, subject that uh, I added on was economics, and mm-hmm. that just came easy to me. Yeah. Um, so I said, okay, let me let's just figure out what I'm going to do. So I did a year at UDC. I did economics there, um, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, well, so I decided, you know what, that's the path I wanted to go. I didn't want to stay on the island. So my sister was, was graduating from Peter Service, and so she went to, to Holland. I said, okay, I'm going yeah, go to leaving too. Yeah, yeah. Leaving too. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, just um, economics. What 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 is the whole package? What 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 do you learn in for if you go? It's it, it, I, you know the thing is the reason why economics because it's so broad. Okay. I mean, as soon as you when you start off with economics, you get into business, you get into gotcha. all those subjects, mm-hmm. right? So you start getting an understanding of how a a business functions. Gotcha. Um, you understand the micro, the macro, mm-hmm. and everything. Um, so just for me, it it was a it was an idea. It's like this is this is what can set me up for the future. Exactly. It doesn't. It's as broad as I can make it. So. No, oh, nice. Yeah. No, no, dope, dope. Mm-hmm. So, you didn't want to go to the states. You went to Canada. Yeah. Cheaper. Yeah. Better. better. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so Canada. Um, where in Canada? And what school did you go to? And did you um keep on study for economics or yeah? You so change it up um, I did. Uh, so Toronto, just out. It's a city called Waterloo. Okay. Um, it's a city that's about forty-five minutes outside of Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, the school that I went to is called Wilfrid Laurier. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a business school, so it's very known for its uh, business and economics programs. Gotcha. Um, but the city is also very well known for the University of Waterloo, which mm-hmm. is a, a technical school. Okay. So you have a lot of engineering programs there. Um, so what you would do is you would have double degrees. So you have a lot of students doing economics and uh, technical a technical degree at... Gotcha at the other university. Um, but yeah, so I started economics there. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, but again, like I said, it just, it wasn't for me. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm not someone that enjoys school as much. Yeah. Like, I love to learn. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, but just the classes, the exams, and everything, it yeah. just, it's it, just... It's boring sometimes. It, yeah, yeah it, it's not, the, it just, it's, it's just not me, you know? <laughs> I get um, you. So yeah, so I did uh, three years um, and then I just like, you know what, like, no. This the last year, like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, <laughs> mu- pretty much. Um, it just like, I had to redo classes. It just, mm-hmm. you know, I, I could also see like my parents, they weren't happy because I was, I was failing. I mean, you know, it's yeah. also extra money yeah, to have exactly. to pay and everything. So it's like, I said, like, you know what, why am I doing this? Um, and in the meantime, I got a job at Apple Yeah. Um, via a friend of mine through a fraternity. Mm-hmm. Um, so... And I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, this is, I was like, you know what, it's, 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 this is what I am. I can be myself. I can, I can, I'm, I'm a very outgoing person. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just. I've <laughs> noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and, and it just, I could be myself there and it was yeah. just easy. Like, I mean, and it was nice. So I was like, you know what, Let, let's see where this takes me. Gotcha. And it took me pretty far. So, you stayed at Apple like five years? Uh, yeah, like, almost five years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, five years actually, exactly, yeah. actually. Um, so I started in Waterloo. Mm-hmm. Um, I 
started off what they call a specialist. Yeah. So okay. a red zone specialist. Um, you have to con- like it's I, it's very similar to a to a restaurant where you have the front of house and the yeah. back of house. Okay. Um, so the front of house they call the red zone. Okay. Because um, that's <laughs> that's basically where where everything happens. It's yeah. Where you bring in the customer basically gotcha. into the echo, uh, Apple ecosystem. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you have the back of house, um, which is more where you have your geniuses, gotcha. your mobile technicians and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I started off front of house. I started off as a red zone specialist, as a part-timer, built my way up after a year. I became a mobile technician. Nice. A year after that, they got sent out to Corpertino for about two months to, study, or to become a genius basically. Yeah. And you went there? Um, yeah, yeah. I stayed there. It was awesome. That was an amazing experience, man. If I can say one thing, Apple really takes care of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. No, and then um, after about... So this was all in Waterloo. And yeah. after about three years there, um, my manager moved over to the store in Toronto, the biggest mm-hmm. store in Toronto. And he asked if I wanted to join him there. Um, and to kind of build my my reputation there as gotcha. well. Um, so I moved, me and my, my now wife, uh, we moved to Toronto at that time. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we moved to Toronto um, and then, uh, yeah, built myself there up. Mm-hmm. And I was, was uh, moved over to which was like more a... A genius admin role, so yeah. you're more controlling the the repair area gotcha. where everything gets repaired. Um, and yeah, that, I did that for about two years, and then the opportunity came to start number ten, and you jumped on it. I jumped on that yeah. bandwagon. I was like, "Hell <laughs> oh, yeah, let's do this!" You know, it's but, a, it was always a passion. So yeah, it's like, yeah. but um, going back to the the genius, like I did some research. I, I it, they say that. Um, for being a genius at uh, Apple, it's you when people when the customers have like problem with their Mac or their their Apple product, they'll, they'll call you. Is that true, or you're more? It's it's true. Um, I mean, the, the the thing is, so what you have you have Apple Care, yeah. which is um, which is our phone support basically. Exactly. Not it. That's that's what you call in. That's the first thing that you pretty much do, right? Like shit, my computer's not working. Um, let, let me figure out what I can do. And I'm gonna call up. <laughs> And nine out of ten times, it gets translated to a store, okay. to the closest store near you. Yeah. And at that point, we invite the customer to come back in. Yeah. Um, and then take a look. First, you get a diagnostics done in the store. They'll take a look. And then from that point, they determine it needs a repair or mm-hmm. it needs a software update, whatever it may be. Yeah. It gets sent to the back for a repair. And at that point, you... Um, do the repair. Gotcha. After a couple of days, customer picks it up. Mm-hmm. Now, this is five years ago, like four years ago. <laughs> you don't know so how it's going I, right I, now. <laughs> I don't know how it goes right now. <laughs> so, no. so take everything I say with a grain of salt because it might be different now. <laughs> no, man. No, nice. Yeah. So in, before we get into number 10, yeah. was food always a passion for you? Yes. Because... Um, you're cooking right now, right? You're, Correct. You're, you're, it's, and yeah. It, it, was it always that you were somebody that was always in the kitchen, always cooking, always um, bringing, coming up with inventive uh, like uh, ideas for food and stuff? Or yeah. is it just like, yeah, let's yeah. try this shit out? No, you're right. I, um, it's always been in, in the family, basically. Okay. Um, I have an uncle, yeah. um, Eduard Suarez. Okay. Um, he was always in hospitality business, still mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Um, he used to be the manager at uh, general manager at Applebee's when Applebee's was still a thing on the oh, island. Nice. Um, and then he started to run resorts mm-hmm. in Antigua. Um, yeah. He came back to the island as well. Um, so I mean, that's hospitality. Yeah. Then my dad and my mom always cooking. I mean, it was always mm-hmm. a thing in the house where we'd always have like amazing meals. It was just always great. Yeah. Um, and then Sundays was family day. Exactly. So. We'd usually do a dinner mm-hmm. or a barbecue or whatnot, and then I would always be in the kitchen cooking with my mom, yeah. prepping everything. Um, so I think it just was always in us. Like, it's just like we enjoy doing yeah. it. I, I enjoy seeing smiles on people, their faces. Yeah. And for me, an easy way to do that is with food and drinks. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Right? It's, 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 it's easy because it's, it's, it brings people together if yeah. you think about it. Yeah, right? like, it does. I mean, it's the best place. Everyone sits around the table mm-hmm. with amazing food, amazing drinks, and after like a long week, 
Exactly. Yeah, everybody comes. Yeah. Get, get, get some drinks. Get some gin. Gin and tonics. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny enough that you bring that up because that's actually like my parents divorced. Yeah. And so my mom's um, husband now, yeah. um, he always drank gin and tonic. <laughs> and so here I am, young kid, <laughs> tasting a gin and tonic. I was like, oh my God, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you drink this? This is garbage. <laughs> and, you know, because, I, I mean, we would always make the drinks and yeah. everything. And I would always sneak a sip. But it's just, I was like, my God, like, wh- like why? And now here we are 15 years later. Drinking gin drinking and tonic. Gin and tonic. <laughs> We've upped the game a little bit with some nicer gins. Gin, yeah, but, but <laughs> we're still doing the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's always like that. Like when, when you're a kid and you, um, my dad always like, Tell me to get a beer for him from the cooler or something like that. Yeah. And I he used to drink uh Amstel. Like I was like, oh let me, let me try <laughs> it. Let me try it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh this shit is it's ass. ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. why how can you drink this? I mean <laughs> look at me drinking IPAs and bitter stouts and all that shit. But I think like and especially with alcohol, it's such an acquired taste, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. you start appreciating the certain flavors that mm-hmm. are in whether you're drinking whiskey, you're drinking gin, rum, exactly, tequila, for example. Yeah. I mean and, and each has its own like flavor profile, and then you get used to drinking yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think that the more you drink alcohol in yeah. general, you the, the more you find you get to like it. No, and but that's that's completely true. Yeah. yeah, because let's say it's just like uh, once somebody told me like like sushi, you got to know how to eat it. You got to get used, used to, to eating it. it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I, I put that in everything I do almost like. If I don't like it now, maybe I'll like it later. It, it's a thing. But that's that's a thing. And you know what? You need to have that, um, that I wouldn't say courage, but that, that w- wanting to, to try. be open and yeah. try new yeah. things and try it again. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, you might not like it the first time. You might not like it the second time. Who knows? The third time, you're like, oh, my God, this yeah. is the best thing ever. Exactly. And it, it depends on, like, in food-wise and also in cocktail-wise, it depends on who's making it. Yes. So, you know? Yes. <laughs> So it, it, it's it's it, it's a big difference. <laughs> so you that's you so get true. A pastel fritter, you'll get it like ah, oh, this shit is ass from somewhere else, and then maybe you'll make it. I'm like, oh man, this shit is delicious. Yeah, and it, it's just it's sometimes it, 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 the same ingredients, the same shit, but the love you put into it and the, making but that's, it. That's the yeah. thing. It's like the effort and the love. Yeah, man. Um, people think love, okay, you're like looking at the pasta and you're like, oh my God, this is so nice and that's love. No, <laughs> the love is the attention that you put exactly. into the dish, right? Um, and then, like you said, everyone has its has their own way of making their drink mm-hmm. or, or uh, food mm-hmm. for whatever. Um, but you, it, everyone has its twists. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, someone makes an aglio olio a mm-hmm. different way than yeah. they make it in, in Italy. Exactly. And yeah. it might be sacrilegious to, like, change things. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, if it's nice, if that's how you like it, then that's what you do with exactly. it. And that's the beauty about food and drinks is you can express yourself mm-hmm. in it. If yeah. you want it spicy, you make it spicy. If you're yeah. feeling hot-headed, you want it cool down, you make it like bitter and make it like cooler. You know, yeah. and, the, and that's the beauty of it. You can express yourself on how you are and how exactly. you want it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're, so, you're spot on on that. So it, it was like, it's, um, it's a thing that you, let's say on the island, it's not something that people are really, really open for trying and... Um, be yeah. more open for cre- of like trying and no, but that's flavor true. wise and yeah. type of drinks, type of food. I, I agree. However, I feel like now that the younger generation is starting to come in, yeah. um, you start seeing um, more ambition. Yeah, so you, that's true. I wouldn't say ambition because that's mean towards the, the, the older people. But because uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, they, they set everything in place and then we're just here to, to elevate it, yeah. right? Um, but that's what I see now with the younger people and the new places that are opening up. Mm-hmm. It's like you see that drive, you see that ambition. They want to try new things. Exactly. And that's just exciting, mm-hmm. you know? And, and it, it takes us from the standard of uh, this, the, the same things. For, like, for an example, a lot of people are opening new stuff and mm-hmm. they're opening a new concept. It's not the same concept as everybody that's else. That's nice. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You know, and a lot of people say like, oh, Curacao is oversaturated with restaurants. There is no opportunity. There's nothing. And I was like, no, there is so yeah. much opportunity. This island is just, is just ripe for the taking. Yeah. It's like it's ready there. You can, there's so many beautiful locations that you find and you drive through. And it's like, hey, this can be an awesome space mm-hmm. for an awesome restaurant. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the thing is, is don't do the same thing. Yeah. 
find a concept and it might be similar to someone else, yeah. but do your own thing. Yeah. Right. Cause that's, that's yeah. going to, that's, what's going to set you apart Ex from the rest. Exactly. And for me, the, it's hard. Like you have all the big names, let's say you got number 10, you have all the, all the other restaurants, yeah. the brunch places and everything. Um, for me, it's when you're open in, in, a, in a place that's not so very, let's say, um, well trafficked. Well, yeah. Um, it's difficult to get the people there. Yeah, it, I agree. Like, like in number ten itself, it's, it, was, it, it, was it was difficult, in the right? Beginning, beginning yeah. Um, the, the, one of the thing is, and especially as a local-born person, someone that's born on the island, you have connections, mm -hmm. right? And you need to feed on those connections. Um, so yeah, so number ten is situated in on a, basically on a one-way street. It's exactly. on, it's on a, it's Santa Rosa, eh? yeah. busy street. But to get there, if you don't come from the right direction, you need to circle around. Exactly. Um, and it's kind of hidden. I mean, with all the trees and everything in mm -hmm. front of it, so people just pass by it. So you kind of need to know where it is. Mm -hmm. um, but that that's where we started, like the connections. Like we knew, we know a lot of people. Yeah. Um, people know us, and it's like okay, number ten. Okay, you via via. Yeah. So, okay, let's give it a try. Hey, where is it? Okay, bop, bop, bop. And now the word is out. Yeah. Um, people know where to find us. We still, on a day-to-day -day basis, we get a call. Hey, um, how do I get to your place? <laughs> we, we explain it. But, like, you know, and, and uh, as soon as the word comes out, yeah. um, you're going to get that traffic. Exactly. If you, have, if you have good quality food, good service, great ambiance, yeah. people are going to come. Yeah, for, for me, the first time I went to number 10, um, I, I searched for it for like uh, two days straight. <laughs> no lie. So I, I passed out. I, I, I got it. I passed it. I was is it here? And I, I kept on moving. I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. I can find it. And the other day, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to drive in and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just stumbled into it. I'm like, oh, yeah. shit, it's here. Okay, cool. But everything is so delicious there, man. No, and thank it's, you. It's... it's yeah. And you guys always, I, I, I love the cassava chips. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, so it's, uh, you know, and that's a funny thing. Um, so one thing that you need to know about us is none of us have Horika experience. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Libby, so my sister, so it's, it's basically, it's um, myself and my sisters, yeah. our partners, mm -hmm. and then my mom as well. Yeah. Um, she's basically the one that keeps everything together. <laughs> like when shit hits the fan, yeah, she's like, you guys like, are like... Pfft. Yeah, when, like, when every, yeah, exactly. When everything like hits the fan, she's the one that like brings everything back together. She jumps in where it's necessary as well. So it's really a family restaurant. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, um, I'm trying to figure out where I was going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't help you out with this one, man. <laughs> um, but oh yeah, about the chips. So when we started, yeah. um, none of us really have any horeca mm -hmm. like experience. Uh, my wife worked in restaurants now and then. Uh, my sister worked at Starbucks. Um, Donnie did, uh, uh, my brother-in-law, Donnie did a, a, a course, a culinary course. But that's about the extent. He worked at Boosty as well, but that's about the extent. So yeah. we never really had any idea how to run business a business think, yeah. or how to run a restaurant. Um, so you learn as you go. Mm -hmm. So what we started doing is we bought banana chips in bags. And then all of a sudden you start realizing, you start doing the cost calculation. You're like, yeah. dude, this is expensive. way too fucking expensive. Yeah. <laughs> like, we need to cut down on this. So then we started finding alternatives. So you're yeah. buying chips on the island. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, there are no more chips to buy on the island because you bought everything. everything yeah. You know? And, uh, and you're like, okay, shit, what now? Um, so I was walking through Center one day and I found this, what looked like a terror route, yeah. uh, which is called Malanga Coco. Um, and I was like, hmm, maybe we can fry it. So there we are, started to fry it. <laughs> and then, oh, this is nice, delicious, awesome. Everyone liked it. And then all of a sudden, the demand for it got so crazy that literally every night we were there frying freaking <sighs> chips till like 10, 11 o'clock in the evening just to, just to keep up with demand. Oh. Um, and at the time, we did everything ourselves. Yeah. We still do a lot ourselves. Um, but yeah, so it was literally like we come uh -huh. home. So we had like, we started off at 6.30, get home at about 6, and then start frying till 10. Yeah. So, and then do that cycle every, every freaking day. single yeah. day. So you start breaking. Yeah. So um, those are lessons that we learned. And those are from those lessons you build yeah. off of it. Um, so now we have someone that fries for us the entire day. Okay. Build up stock. Nice. Um, but yeah. But how... how um because when when you start with a business, it's also like 
the, the people that started, there's like, you guys are running it, you guys are surfing, you guys are doing anything, everything. Yeah. So when, when you get the staff, it's, it's a thing. But how long does, it, does, does the chip stay um, okay for? So what we do is we put them in, in, in sealable containers. Okay. Um, so they're air, airtight. Okay, they gotcha. stay, they stay about a, they stay They hold about a week. Okay, nice. But we need to fry it twice, three times a week. <laughs> <laughs> so Just it, to it, keep it, 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 it won't, it won't yeah. get to it in a week, yeah. Um, no, nice. So, but yeah, so, and, and you know what? It, the, the thing is, like, when, like you said, like when we started, we did everything ourselves. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we still do a lot. I mean, yeah. at number 10, pretty much everything is homemade. Yeah. The only thing that we don't do is bread. Gotcha. Um, okay. Pretty much. Uh, our bread we get uh, from Paolo, the Lazy Loaf. Okay. Shout out. Oh. Um, we get our buns. Yeah. Uh, for our for our burgers or our breakfast buns, we get nice. those at Daniela. Shout out Steven sure. Oven. Um, so those those uh, those are the things that we just don't do ourselves because to do that we need a baker or yeah. we need to open up at four and start baking the bread and that's just something that I'm not interested in. No one really is interested in doing. Yeah. It's just because it's so demanding because yeah. we already have such a demanding day. It's just to add on top of that. Yeah. It's it's also nice to support the local, locals yeah. and the support the local businesses here mm -hmm. so yeah it's kind of like a win-win situation exactly yeah. but like when i was just going to go like a, a step back from yeah. you were in the states yeah and canada yeah canada i'm oh, sorry yeah, canada. no worries, sorry, no worries. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> canada and um you got a phone call and yeah so your your mom your yeah your so sister so like, the idea so let me tell you kind of like explain to you how this like number 10 actually yeah. started um, so my sister and Donnie moved back from Holland. Okay. Um, my sister was complete, so she, uh, was completely into yoga. Mm -hmm. So she started Dushi Sup um, and Liberty Yoga. So mm -hmm. she was giving yoga, private yoga classes and doing yoga on paddle boards. Exactly. Um, but Donnie was working at Boosty and really enjoyed the barista yeah. life and like, oh, okay, I like it. We can start something like this. Yeah. So in their mind, they wanted to start a coffee truck so you know okay. like you have the food trucks in the states yeah. you have like turkey pang and everything on the island mm -hmm. but the idea was you're gonna do a coffee, coffee dedicated truck nice okay um so that was the idea um but realistically on the island like it's not your population is not big enough for you to do that right yeah. like if in a new york for example exactly. you park your anywhere anywhere and, then, and yeah. it's just you have like thousands of people amsterdam you park it down and you have so many people yeah. businesses you're gonna have so many people that are gonna come towards you exactly on curacao i mean you're not gonna come out and walk out of your business to grab a co hot coffee in a hot day yeah right so it just it just didn't really make sense mm -hmm. So to convince my stepdad at that time, or like my, yeah, my stepdad, they said, he's the, the gin lover, by the okay. way. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they'll convert the coffee truck into a gin truck at night. <laughs> so just to please him as well to get him on board. And he's like, hmm, interesting, but no, it's not going to happen. We're not going to invest in that. Um, so... Via my mom, yeah. um, she is really good friends with... Um, with Michelle from mm. uh, Michelle Capriles. Okay. Um, and she knew that that building was, they were trying to find someone to get into the building where gotcha. number 10 is right now. Yeah. Um, so Libby and Donnie went over and they liked the location, pretty much agreed on the concept and everything yeah. right then and there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically how number 10 started. Oh, nice. Um, and then um, I think it's, we agreed in July. And we opened in November. So it was really like, yeah. just like, just boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. Yeah, I know. So in October, my mom turned, I think it was 50 at that time. Um, so I flew over to Curacao. Um, I set up the, because at the time I was still working at Apple. Yeah. So I set up the whole network. I set up the whole, um, the POS system and everything. Oh, nice. And I really enjoyed it. And they yeah. kept asking like, oh, join, come be a part please. of it. Be a part please. of it. Be a part of it. Please, <laughs> like, do it. Like, we need you. Um, so I said, okay, I'll think about it. Because, I mean, I had a nice life in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very nice trajectory. Like, I mean, it was pretty much laid out for me. Like, mm -hmm. okay, these are the next steps that you're going to take. And it seemed very lucrative. Yeah. Um, I, I, my wife is from Canada, so she was living there as well. So for, it was, it was going to be a big step if, I, if we were going to move. Exactly. Um, so 
uh, in the upcoming two months, so starting in November and December, I was flying up and down pretty much from Shit. Toronto to Curacao, Curacao yeah. to Toronto, um, until we, my wife and I decided, you know what, this is where you're both young, yeah. and let's just jump in head first, and let's just, let's just do it, let's commit. Um, so yeah, and that, that's basically how number 10 started. That's oh, nice. basically how I moved to, to back to Curacao. Um, and yeah, I'm so happy we did. Yeah. Yeah. I it, mean, it wasn't like a, uh, not, not forced, but um, you, you don't have like mixed feelings about it or anything? Not at all. Not at all. Like, I mean, I have so many friends back in Canada. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the one thing I do miss is the friendships that you've yeah. made. Um, but you build a whole life there already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, but uh, I look forward. Yeah. I don't really look backwards. I don't really look at the past. Exactly. I will just learn from the past. Mm -hmm. I don't have any regrets or anything. Um, so for me, um, it was just, you know what? Let's just look forward. Like, this is something that we can do. And this is what we can, like, build a life around. Gotcha. So if, and if it doesn't work out, I'm 25 at that, at that point. I was still 25. It's <laughs> going on 26. It. <laughs> so it's like, you know what? If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And then... Mm -hmm. I can start up and build everything up again. Exactly. Right? So when you're mm -hmm. young, you have the opportunity to risk and risk big yeah. because you have a life ahead of you where you can rebuild. Exactly. At least that's yeah. my, my, my standpoint. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have the same, yeah. the same way. So, so at that time, I was like, yeah, let's take this risk. Let's do it. Let's just, let's go. And then my wife was fully supportive of it. And mm -hmm. it, took, it took a little bit, of, like, I mean, we spoke a lot about it. So, yeah. 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 Here we are almost yeah, uh, four years later. <laughs> yeah, time and, flies, man. Yeah, man, time <laughs> flies so fast. <laughs> but for um, going through like the phase of um, travel, of not traveling, moving from Canada to um, Curacao, it was a whole different. Uh, you you had to get used to it again, right? The yeah. living on the island yes, and yes. all this because the you you live in the let's say big city and yeah. all that. It it's was different. It was really. It was really hard to get. That was. It wasn't hard. I mean, you, you live on a freaking yeah, island. It's you, not, yeah, it's not yeah. Hard. <laughs> You're uh, used to the people already, but yeah. the, the lifestyle. Is the so lifestyle different. is very different. I mean, like, the thing is, you have on the island. Um, you go there. You ha you need a car. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have a car on the island, it's very difficult to get around. Uh, it, I mean, you have your how, public. How weird is that? Like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but like in in, in 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 Toronto, for example, like you have so much. Like you have Ubers, yeah. you have like public transportation, which is like to the minute. Yeah. It's like it's like just as Holland. Like and mm -hmm. it's like Holland. It, it says that the bus arrives at five fifty five. The bus is there five fifty five. Like as soon as your clock <laughs> hits, 12, it's like it's, it's there. there. <laughs> you know, and and it's the same thing there. And 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 so it's easy to get around. And yeah. when it's easy to get around, it's nice to explore. Mm -hmm. It's so big. So yeah. there's, there's there's so many things to explore. Um, so those are the things that I do miss. Yeah. Um, but luckily, we have the opportunity to travel. Yes, exactly. COVID kind of really yeah, put yeah, a yeah. big damper on that. Yeah, yeah, but COVID. we have the opportunity, and I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to be in a position that I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, that we are in as a family, that yeah. we are able to travel. Um, so you can get off the island and still do those things that you were doing. You just can't do it on a daily day basis, exactly. but you yeah. can still do it when... Whenever, Once in a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, the transition for me, because I was uh, I was born on the island, it wasn't as hard or difficult. Yeah, because I already knew everything. I already yeah. knew like the how people. It, how how it it is, it. Yeah. For my wife, on the other hand, it was it was pretty. It wasn't difficult, but it was a lot harder. Yeah, um, not agree. understanding the language, mm -hmm. so she started taking class and everything. Oh, but nice. She's finally starting to settle in a little bit. Oh, nice. So yeah. Some some people don't don't do that. No, the, th the it, things you need to man. Yeah. Like, like it, if you go to France or to, you you go to Paris, you you yeah. have to know the language. So exactly. It's, like just I I don't mind uh, talking English or anything, yeah. but just learn a little, understand what I'm saying. But that's, th the, that's the thing, like you know what, and like the talking is very difficult for yeah. her. Yeah. Um, but she understands the language. Exactly. Right, that's and good. that's that's very important. Like I mean, she can follow along with conversations, mm -hmm. and, which is amazing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so for her it was a little bit more difficult, but but yeah, now she's uh, starting to settle in and everything. Oh, dope! So yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah. And um, in like number ten, after you guys started, your how who created the menu in first, like the food menu? Because I don't know, none of you are chefs, no, like, no. like 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 <laughs> on paper or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Um, so when we when it first started, um, my mom basically started with the 
the the the kitchen basically. Okay. So, but when we started, we had three sandwiches okay. and cakes. Oh, nice. That's okay, that, that's, that's it. That's that's literally what it is. And now you guys have a and whole menu. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, because the, we would never expected mm -hmm. to be as big as we are now. Like when we first started, like it's like okay, yeah, we're just we just need something. Mm -hmm. Like my stepdad was always on the point. It's like you need food. You need something to keep the people there because yeah. your margins on the coffee aren't that aren't amazing. Exactly. Um, because you want the coffee price to be relatively low, um, so that people stay and have more. Yeah. Uh, but so you need to have something else there that's going to keep the clients there and yeah. they're going to stay a little bit longer. Um, so I, if I'm not mistaken, um, my sister at the time spoke to um, Marguerite Elias. I don't know if you know her. No. Um, she is the sister of my best friend. Okay. Um, and she moved to Dubai and she was always, a f she's a foodie. She's always had like these... Um, Instagram pages. Sorry, yes, please. Yeah. Let me just Chuck. So um, she always had like these little things. She has like started her own business where she created like Lebanese food and all that kind of stuff. So um, we partnered in with her a little bit as well to get like some ideas yeah. to get at least something off the ground. Um, so here we are. I come along. Um, and we noticed that we're starting to get busier and they're starting to get demand for other things, which is understandable. So we started adding, okay, what does the client want? Okay, the client wants quesadillas. Okay, let's start doing quesadillas. Um, the client wants eggs. Okay, let's start doing eggs. Um, and then eventually you start creating a menu. You, yeah. start, you start adding them as specials, and that's kind of what we do is we, okay. we create something, we add it as a special, hey, this is a hit. People really like it. People are really ordering this. Okay, we're going to, thank you. Um, we're going we're gonna to put this on our menu. Um, and then as, uh, now it's, you start playing around with things, right? Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we travel a lot. So... We go to the States, we go to South America, yeah. Europe, wherever, and, and you find that inspiration. Yeah. yeah, You visit restaurants that are like-minded, mm -hmm. and you say, what do they do? What can I do with that, and how can I expand on that? Exactly. Um, I'm not a big fan of looking on the islands to see what other people are doing. Yeah. I just don't like it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I try to see... Uh, on, usually, like in the states, like a big inspiration for me is uh, is Miles. He has a restaurant called Miles Prime. Okay. Entrepreneur, doing this for like twenty years, and he has like four or five businesses, a restaurant on South Beach, sure. and he has this place called um, Big Pink, and it's like <laughs> a fifties diner. Oh. Dope. And they sell the coolest shit ever, man. Shit. Um, so, I, I mean, thank God, like, we have the opportunity to go there. So, yeah. we've started to build a relationship with him as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you start having a conversation with him. You see what they do. And yeah. then you put twists on it. Gotcha, yeah. Right? Um, and then, then that, that's how we started adding things to our menu. And that's where we go with a little bit of crazier things. Um, then, as well, like, other restaurants, you see, okay, they're doing this. Maybe if we add salmon on top of mm -hmm. it. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then and, and that's kind of like you play around. And, yeah. and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You move you, on. You change it and you, you change do something it. else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's, it's, it's playing around. And I only do food I like. <laughs> no, but, but that's like, I mean, as a chef, if you do food that you don't like, yeah. it, it's it, not yeah. going to come out nice. Yeah. Because you don't know it. You don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Right, so I, I primarily only do food I like. Okay, no, oh, nice, and uh, yeah. I'm liking it too. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's comfort food. Yeah, at the is. end of the day, that's what it is. It's healthy conscious, so mm -hmm. we're health conscious, but also, like, if you yeah. want to be greasy and you want to have a burger, Go get on. that burger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. So, um, with number 10, I know I'm. <clears throat> Every let's say everyone I have that's uh, a little chef wise, a little chef on the on this podcast, I ask them. I like this a lot. Yeah, the vanilla. The vanilla comes yeah, out. Yeah, it's yeah, so, so nice. <laughs> I know. So in the every chef or um, food enthusiast that I have on the on this podcast, I, I really ask them like, do you guys buy locally? Do you guys like um, to buy locally? And how? 
do you guys think it's going? It's. It, I love to buy. I, if I could buy just local, yeah. I would buy just local. Mm-hmm. Um, it just. It's difficult to buy local. Um, because I, I mean, we're and you also have to think like we're we're on a smaller scale compared to a lot of other restaurants. We do a lot like we do a lot. We see about three hundred people a day, mm-hmm. so I mean it's a lot. Um, and, are you calling that smaller scale? Or yeah, because if you think if you look at the hotels and everything that primarily oh, buy up everything, yeah. right? Okay. Um, so they it's it's especially like with the with the. Because you have your seasons, you can't mm-hmm. grow everything on the island, yes. which is difficult. So we have to import. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I I really want to try to purchase as much local as I can. Like our microgreens, we buy local. Our cherry yeah. tomatoes, we buy local. Um, I try to go to Hofi Kaskora yeah. as much as I can. Yeah. Um, but again, that that also stopped a little bit. Um, I need to get back on that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I get um, you. Again, bread. I try to do it lo- like not mass produced. Yeah. Like our sourdoughs, our buns, our hot dog buns, or whatever mm-hmm. we might have, we try to buy local. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else do we buy local? Like fish, for example, like tuna. Mm-hmm. I try to get local as mm-hmm. much as I can, but I mean, there are times where you don't get local sourced fish. Yeah. I mean, it's times where it's just like I mean, you yeah, it's like a dry spur. Y- yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and then you have to find alternatives. Exactly. Um, and then you sometimes have to buy something that's imported. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, I wish we could grow broccoli on the island, but <laughs> I mean, there's, there, it's, it's just like the climate's not there, right? Yeah. Or do you have to make like a eco friend, like, I'd say, an eco dome or something yeah, like that? Yeah. And, and you know what? And I think there's been a lot of startups that have tried to do it yeah. and just haven't had the funding or, or, yeah, or exactly. it just didn't succeed properly. Because what you get right now, and I'm pretty sure you guys notice it, um, we notice it, a lot of the other restaurants notice, is that we have to import so much. Mm -hmm. And now with the global shortage of everything, it's like we're also not getting certain things in. Exactly. I mean, there are days where we don't get strawberries. Yeah. And then it's like we use strawberries. (laughs) is so, like we use, like if you see how many strawberries we use, it's insane. (laughs) But uh, sorry to break it, but the the icy, the icy is, is strawberries, right? Yeah, the 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 the, the, the iced tea, the iced tea <laughs> is um, so we have we have ver- variety of iced teas actually, um, and we rotate them. Um, so okay. we have a lot of them are hibiscus based. Okay. Yeah. Um, some uh, some are as one is called strawberry fields. <laughs> so yes, strawberries. Um, but we also have so one with kiwi. Um, okay. Or oh, uh, nice. or a lemon lime, um, yeah. and 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 we rotate them. You know, okay. it's like it's, it's it doesn't stay the same exactly because. Yeah. Same gets boring. Exactly. Yeah. You want to switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and our juices are all all locally made juices. We make our own syrups. Like uh, nice. we now have a compass, north, east, south, west. <laughs> so um, and each has its own like distinct flavor. But yeah, a lot of it is based off of lamunchis, for example, yeah. limes. And sometimes there are no limes. limes. <laughs> and what do you do at that point? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or the or passion fruit. Mm-hmm. Like we work a lot with passion fruit, and unfortunately, passion fruit doesn't really get grown on the island. Nope. So you need to get passion fruit out of Colombia, Santo mm-hmm. Domingo, wherever. But sometimes, if the shipment is delayed and you don't have it, yeah. then you're you have to yeah yeah and it's, you're in it's, the shit. Let's say that. <laughs> and it's difficult because y- you want to. Mm-hmm. Great, like an amazing menu with so many great ingredients, but if it doesn't work or yeah. it's not there, then it's just difficult to find alternatives. Yeah. Um, and that's why we try to uh, use as many distributors as we're able. Um, sometimes one has it, the other one doesn't, so yeah. then you find what works best for you. Yeah. And yeah, and it's, and it's, I, I, I would love for us to be able to grow everything on the island. Yeah. It, it it will be nice. It that I mean because um for let's say for for me the the or for the bar exactly, the the main thing that we always always order is limes. Yeah. And it's I want to buy local limes, but I, I can get like a box this week and next week maybe I won't get that it, box. That, that's <laughs> the thing. <laughs> um and and that's and that's a difficult thing and I think um if if everyone starts. Uh, ordering local or buying mm-hmm. local, the demand yeah. is going to go up, and the pro uh, the 
the production is going to go up yeah. because there's a more demand for yeah. it. So they they're going to be forced yeah. to. But it's going to take at least a year mm -hmm. for us to get to that point. Exactly. And what are you going to do as a restaurant owner or a business owner? You're going to say, I can't get it there, so I'm going to find it somewhere else. Yeah. And that's a very difficult line where local farmers um, are like, hey, yeah, I can do it, but I can't get to the demand. So as quick as, as you want. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, for example, eggs. Um, we started off, um, we use a shit ton of eggs. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's, it's insane. I mean, because of all the cakes, we, bake, yeah. we mm -hmm. bake ourselves and everything. So we use a lot of eggs. Um, so we always just bought them at Centrum, mm -hmm. Mangusa, um, wherever we found eggs, we would buy them. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, freshness. How fresh are these eggs? You don't know. You don't they know might, exactly. they might have been sitting in the warehouse for a week or two <laughs> weeks. You don't know. So we started searching around, and then we found, uh, via via, we found this guy, Angel Farms. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I know him, yes. Fucking love the dude. He's yeah. awesome. Um, but uh, when we first started, he could deliver us five pallets a week. Okay. And we use 40 pallets a week. Oh, shit. So, you know, and it's like, okay, you know what? We said, okay, no, we're just going to commit to him. That Even if it's pallets? just five pallets a yeah. week, we're going to get those five pallets. And then w as soon as he grows, then we'll start to mm -hmm. take more and more from him. So um, he's now grown and he can, f funny enough, to, uh, last week he messaged saying like, hey, if you need more eggs, I have more eggs. I, I can fulfill your 40 pallets a week. So that's what we're now we're fully focusing on angel farms. Angel farms. Nice. So uh, which is nice because now you have a consistent in, like yeah. it's consistently coming in. Um, but it it also took us almost a year to get to that point. Yeah. You know because yeah. you have up and downs. Like when the rainy season comes, he lost a bunch of a uh, bunch of chickens. Shit. Okay. Um, and then the chickens don't lay eggs. Mm -hmm. You know and and so but we're finally there and 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 it just takes time mm -hmm. and I think. Maybe in a year, two years, the farms will start be getting bigger. Yeah. So like you're gonna start getting. Coffee costs became Dude, very big in very the big. COVID, uh, yeah. the COVID area, like the lockdown and stuff. So they're, they're I mean, and they're doing a great job. Yeah. Um, they have nice product. Yeah. Their produce is really nice, very fresh. Yeah. And um, I know they have a lot of eggplants right now. <laughs> yeah. So if I'll you want eggplants, coffee <laughs> <laughs> is the place to go. Yeah, um, and and the the farms in, in general, yeah, we have <coughs> the non unsold tuna. You have yeah. uh, the bracaput also, and and they're yeah. also like gradually they're growing because every let's say on, on Saturdays I go sometimes to bracaput to 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 buy. Some I never produce. I never knew how big their property was until I actually visited for yeah. with Helmi. Helmi had one of the dinners dinner in the fields. Okay, at uh, at the bracaput plantage, and we walked around, and they have a nice property, yeah. man. Nice, and it's nice nicely laid out. Excuse me, very nicely laid out, and. The melon that they grow there yeah. is so sweet. It's I really never tried nice. melon. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. Oh, nice, yeah. man. So we, we just wandered off the... the <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry. <laughs> we went into like a farming and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so um, going back um, from um, living on the island, owning a business. Yeah. Is it because um, it's hard to start... It's hard to keep the people there for, let's say, for everybody almost, like to give them the product that they want and also um, staying consistent. It's, it's for, for some people, it's hard. Well, was it hard for you guys to, like, um, I know you guys change a lot of things um, through the menu, but the things that are always on the menu, like, I don't know, maybe the BLT, some yeah. things like that. There are staples that people come back for. Yeah. So, I mean, our club salmon, um, mm -hmm. and right before we started the podcast, I yeah. mentioned that we smoked our own salmon. Exactly. Um, that is a staple. Like, people come and they say, that's what I want. Yeah. I don't want anything else. <laughs> that's what I come for. I want and something you, with small salmon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? And, and, and that's, like, I mean, those things, like, we don't take off. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've changed our menu four, five, six times maybe over the over the year where you completely overhaul it. I got you. Um, but those things are staples. Yeah. I mean, the BLTA, the truffle number 10, and the club salmon, yeah. they're not going anywhere. <laughs> acai bowl as well, as much as there's a pain in the ass to make. Um, <laughs> Which one is that? The acai bowl. I, I, don't, I just don't like it. 
<laughs> I, I love it. It's like it's refreshing. You made it, you made it yourself, or yeah, man. We make we make it ourselves. The acai bowl. So it's like it's like it's a smoothie. It's pretty okay. much a smoothie. But like when it's super busy in the kitchen and you have to make a smoothie. I mean, we're pretty much already understaffed in yeah. the kitchen as it is. And then to put everything aside and just to make a bowl, it's just like it's like ah. Yeah. But people love it, yeah. you know? And mm-hmm. so it's never going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's always going to be on our menu. It's also very Instagrammable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then, you, like, like you said, consistency. You, you just need to make sure that you're, you're, if the customer comes in today and flies out and is a tourist and comes back six months later and he wants the exact same thing, yeah. it needs to be as good or better. Yeah. Right? So your consistency is key. Yeah. Which is difficult. It's hard, man. It's it's really hard. Um, it, dep- it also depends on who's in the kitchen that day. It, it, it's But that's the beautiful thing. We're Monday through Friday. Yeah. So we're closing weekends. So technically, we can have the same staff in the same position. <laughs> From every, Monday to yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is, and, and that's a conscious choice that we've mm-hmm. made, you know? It's like, um, up front, our staff, our servers, they know our clients, our usuals. Mm-hmm. They know what they drink. Yeah. They know what they like. They know their allergies. They know pretty oh, much nice. everything. Yeah. So it's, it becomes that, that consistency, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and it's also a, an extra touch to know your, your, um, your clients yeah. and the, the people that always come in. And um, to, to give them the same service. Like Sorry, uh, Luke. Mentioned, I said clients one looks at their guests. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Good yeah. guests. I, I know. <laughs> I, I, I just caught myself as well. It's like no, according to Luke, their guests. Let's say the special guests. The special the guests. guests. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, man. But yeah, it's it's so um, you you feel so appreciated and you, you feel so uh, extra. And when, yeah. when when people come in and like, oh, do you want the same thing or you want something else? You want a coffee today? You, or yeah. you want a cappuccino? You know? And it, when when they know the your Let's say the thing you, you drink every day, the, if you're a, a cappuccino guy or a girl, you know, that's the thing. And they, you come in and people are like, oh, you want a cappuccino today? But that's, that's so true. And, it, and it's, it's the details, yeah. right? At the end there of the go. day, it's all about the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, so true. Yeah. And from the years that went into number 10, how long, how long you guys been open right now? So November 1st, we're going to do four years now. Okay, shit. Yeah. That's oh, nice. So, I mean, we're young, but we're not young anymore. No. <laughs> no, you guys are getting old very quick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're still learning on a yeah. day-to-day basis. Oh, nice. Um, it's, so it's going to be four years now. Um, and yeah, and, and we've had customers from day one that are still sitting there every oh, nice. single morning. Oh, yeah. cool. But the thing I want, really want to ask, how hard did COVID hit you guys? It hit hard. It, I'm not going to lie. First one, the first one. because The, the first, second one, a lot of people yeah. told me, like, it, they already used to it. But the, f- the first wave hit us hard. I mean, from going, like, operational to yeah. going, like, the way we were doing in COVID hit 2020. That's when yeah. we went into lockdown. No, so December in 2019, January, February were our biggest months yet. Um, we were seeing a boom in tourism. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were getting a lot of tourism over into the restaurant. Um, and it was just like, I mean, it was nice. It was just go, 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 go. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, just go boom. Yeah. One day or another, just like done. Yeah. You know, and, and that hit us hard. I mean, mentally as well. Like as a business owner, you're like, shit, it was going so well. Mm-hmm. Like now I, I, it's like you don't have any income. Yeah, it's dead. Um, and yes, of course, the government's always like, okay, we'll take care of you and yada, yada, yada. But the, but the image that you're losing as well, it's like people can't come in, people can't. So it's, mm-hmm. it's difficult. It was difficult. I mean, we, we were closed for what, two months? Yeah. Yeah. And you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. I mean, those were very stressful two months mm-hmm. for myself. I took it very hard. Um, but thank, thank God we were able to open up again. Um, and it was a slow build. I mean, yeah. we slowly build up to... To kind of where we were at again, and then boom. Yeah, we had delivery. Two. You guys, you guys, we did delivery. Yeah. but man, you know what? Everyone is like, oh yeah, but you can do delivery. Oh man, you can do this. Oh, you, you can do takeout. It's completely different. Yeah, I know. it is not the same. Um, you you're not in the delivery business. Yeah, let's be honest. Um, as a restaurant. You're, you're, you're used to the, like people coming in. Yeah, and, and, and the logistics that come with it, yeah. right? So think of it as um, you get your order in, mm-hmm. okay? We say a time frame. The food needs to get made, 
needs to get put in a bag. The delivery driver needs to be there and then needs to get out and has to be at the person's house at a reasonable time. Exactly. Surrounding the quotation time and the food needs to arrive hot. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you are as... I don't want to brag, but when you're as big as us or mm -hmm. when you start getting to the point, you have so many takeout orders and delivery orders. Mm -hmm. It gets to the point where one delivery guy is doing seven or eight orders. Yeah. Um, Maybe one of them is going to get cold. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's, it's Google Maps works on the island. It doesn't work <laughs> that good on the island. So you're, works. Like, you're driving around and you're like, okay, uh, ma'am, um, I'm on your street, but I can't find your house number because it goes from one to 200 and then the next house is five again. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's like, where are you? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it takes time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's also like you, we couldn't add more people to deliver because that it raises costs. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, the delivery and the takeout was nice, but it just didn't, it wasn't, we weren't meeting our bottom line. So mm -hmm. we were losing money doing the delivery and takeout. Exactly. Because there's so many different things. Gas prices, which went up crazy. Yeah, crazy, yeah. Like insane. Mm -hmm. um, your takeout boxes, your takeout bags. And ev cups. everything is like uh, eco-friendly also. Exactly. And, and I mean, yeah. you also don't want to have pla too much plastic. You don't want to have, so it's, 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 it's pricey. Yeah. And, so for us, I mean, it kept us alive. It kept, kept us above water, but I wouldn't say like, oh my God, let's do this again. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, That's why that. we also don't do delivery anymore. Mm -hmm. um, people still calling, oh, do you do delivery? It's like, we do delivery, but we do for bigger events. Yeah. Like if you're a corporate client or if you will do a delivery, but with the, bit, with the way we are now, it's so busy, like we just can't afford to yeah. have someone drive around. It's like, I mean, I'd rather have that person on the floor, yeah. whether it's helping up front or helping in the back. Um, so, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, and um, it's for everybody almost, the first wave, it, it hit really hard. Yeah. Everybody didn't know what to do. That, that, that's the thing. But that's the thing. And the second one, everybody's like, okay, we, we already know. Uh, we can still do like, um, like the uh, delivery and everything. Yeah. everything. And everything went on, like nothing happened. Nothing yeah. happened, yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. But after... COVID, like, COVID is still here, but after yeah. the, the second lockdown, like, I, I was at the time, I was working at Marriott. Yeah. It went from, like, let's say 20 people in the house to yeah. 300 in two weeks. Yeah, it's, it's insane. And, and, and that's why, like, I mean, and, and it's not just us. Yeah. It's everyone. Yeah, if, exactly. you, if you go out now, I mean, if you don't reserve, mm -hmm. you're not getting seated. No. There, or you wait an hour and a half. Exactly. It's, it's, there are so many tourists back on the island um, people are willing to spend that little bit of money that they have. Um, and so, yeah, so, I mean, we're packed. Yeah. Um, and we were at Come yesterday, packed. Yeah. Uh, Fishalicious, packed. Like, all the restaurants are just packed, which is nice to see because it's yeah. like, oh, shit, like, this is, this is what, this is how yeah. it should be, yeah, you know? Yeah, every time. But, um, but you see everybody's overworking themselves oh, man, like crazy. Yeah. But, and you see also everyone is hiring. Yeah, everyone is hiring, but it's difficult to it get. It's so <laughs> difficult, man. Yeah. Um, and that's not to say that that the people on on the island aren't capable of doing mm -hmm. um, the hospitality industry. Yeah. Because I mean, we have some amazing locals that are like awesome. Um, but I feel like the development on the island isn't to par yeah. of what we need to deliver and what is capable of delivering. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean. I, I, and I think because you have a lot of people that go to the hospitality school on the island and they join the server. Um, I'm not sure how, how that works, but they have like different levels and yeah, they have different. Yeah. I've from my it's it's they're too focused on like the 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 hoi de cuisine like mm -hmm. um, serving. Yeah. And, and uptight, just, uptight yeah. and like oh, so mood that this is how it has to be. This is no. no. Let yeah. them learn a little bit like busy like busyness like yeah. i mean we have so many people that come in and i mean number 10 is not hard to serve yeah i mean you need to be fun you need to be outgoing yeah, you need exactly. to be, be yourself um and be be attentive you know and do everything yeah but a lot of people that come in like after three four days it's like they're done it's like i didn't know this was this like intense yeah like, no. I mean, I'm used to just, like, walking food and, and that's it. No, it's like, no, man, you got to go, 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 yeah. go. Make coffee, get out. Get, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, I get where you're coming from because it's, it's difficult. I'm, let's say I'm not 
in my perspective. I, I'm not bad mouthing anybody, or but people are not lazy, but they're a little too held back. Yeah, they're too like I agree. chill. I, I agree. say that yeah. because people um, on the island, um, there there are people that work really good. Yeah, but there's also the ones that like they cannot switch. They're like from chill to busy, and, like and quick, like chat, but chat. That, but that's the thing. It's like if you can't do that, yeah. then it's the hospitality business is not for you. Yeah, exactly. Because the hospital. I think we had we talked about this two nights ago. Exactly. It's yeah, like yeah. you're busy, and then you get that little dip, mm -hmm. and then it's it's quiet maybe for like 30 or 40 minutes, and then all of a sudden like everyone comes in, exactly. and you need to have that switch. That motor needs to start up again. Yeah. And if you can't start it up right away, then yeah, like you're screwed. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> you're screwed. You're in the shit. Yeah, like um, two nights ago, you, you you said like you like it when it's busy. Yes, and I I love it too, man. It's That's... it's it's a thing that you know it gets my blood blood boiling. It's like yeah, let's go. I'd rather have twenty tickets chits on there and it just like go 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 push it out push it out push it yeah. out push it out and then have one and then like okay guys. <laughs> What's up? How are you doing? Okay, let's oh, yeah, get this shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's just it's just not how I am. Mm -hmm. um, there, there might be other people that are like that, that mm -hmm. enjoy that. That it just no. I I'd rather have it busy. I mean, as a business owner, yeah, it makes sense yeah, also, yeah, yeah. right? But you want it to be busy. Yeah, but, yeah. but it just it just yeah. It, it 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 it's it's that's how. It's the mentality. It's the way. Everybody works in the in this industry. It's uh, because some people love it when it's let's say a fine dining restaurant. They don't have to do a lot. You have different servers. One walks the food. Yeah. One serves the table. Yeah. One serves the drinks. Yeah. And I, I, I'm if I'm in that, I'll become depressed. Yeah. I'll, I'll be like saying like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, like, like no, this is not how. Like, <laughs> you know. And I think I mean. That's just how we are. Mm -hmm. We are like everyone. Like when you get hired as a server, yeah. you do everything. Exactly. So whether that's cleaning the kitchen, um, or doing running stuff up front, um, even having to go to a distributor to pick up produce. Yeah. For example, you do everything. Yeah. I mean, I don't want you to have you just bring out coffee. Exactly. That's not your job. Mm -hmm. Everything around it is your job. To make to give the product to, the product has to come. To the table. You know what? That's yeah. the thing. Like, if, if you find your job is to bring coffee, then don't get me wrong, but you're lazy. <laughs> like, because, I mean, that, that means that all you're doing is just walking up and down, mm -hmm. walking out, walk up and down. Like, I mean, that's... Or, or, or work, work, work at Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> no, no, no hate to Starbucks. No, no, no hate. No hate. No hate. No, hate. no, hate. no just... Just but saying. even but even at Starbucks, like I mean, my sister worked at Starbucks, and they also had to do pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just not just coffee. Coffee, no, yeah. take out the trash, get the get the pastries out, f keep filling up, keep filling up, you yeah. know. And then, and 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 that's the thing. It's like, um, especially if you want to work in the in the horeca industry, in the hospitality industry, it's like you need to have that open mindset. It's like I'm gonna do everything. Yeah, yeah, it is, and. It's very, very hard to criticize yeah. people on the island. It, yeah. It's I can take criticism. I can like let's say healthy feedback. Yeah. Let's let's call it like that healthy feedback. So, um, but uh, I've been in this in like say in the hotel business for about eighty seven years, and I've seen people like they cannot take the feedback. No, and and they they'll. Like uh, they close like, up. Yeah, close yeah. up, and it's like yeah, it's done. It's, it's done. As you know, and the thing is, like, and um, people take it personal. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's just how we are on the island. Like, I mean, I also take feedback sometimes personal mm -hmm. because you put so much effort into something, and yeah. if someone sends it back, you're like, oh shit, like, like why? Yeah, like, exactly. I did something wrong, yeah, and exactly. and and that's that's difficult. But you need to find that um, that fine line mm -hmm. where it's constructive feedback exactly yes and not hateful feedback because mm -hmm. it's also the way the feedback is provided right yeah like I'm making I can come to like hey man your drink is shit <laughs> it's like okay but but what's wrong with yeah, that exactly yeah like yeah. tell me what I'm doing wrong so I can I can build on top of mm -hmm. that hey the drink wasn't good I would like for you to add maybe more acidity to it for yeah. example mm -hmm. and then you have something to build off of them so that and that's constructive feedback exactly um, and 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 that's that's what we work on at number 10 I people hate me like especially when we're busy people yeah. hate me 
Um, but I say it as it is. It's like yeah. this and this and this. Keep walking. Keep doing this. Keep up, 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 yeah. up, up. Because they need to know. Because mm. if you're never informed that you're doing something wrong, you think you're doing right. right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So if no one ever said like, hey, you're holding... At number 10, for example, what we do is like when you get your coffee, yeah. you get beautiful latte art, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yes. the yes. latte art needs to be presented towards the customer. Exactly, yes. So that the customer can enjoy the latte art. They're like, oh if, shit, let yeah. me take a picture of this shit. Yeah. 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 If someone just puts it down like this and you don't move it towards or face the customer, they get maybe a latte art that's facing towards someone else and they yeah. get an they get an upside down heart <laughs> which looks like a butt, for example. <laughs> right? Like it's a peach. <laughs> yeah. So and and, and, and and in the beginning, I mean that's what we were focusing on yeah. as well. It's like it's like, hey guys, like I see you're doing this wrong. Mm -hmm. You gotta move it on. Oh I didn't know that we need to do that. You know, so that feedback yeah. empowers the your your employees to understand what they need to be yeah. doing. Your standards. Yes. 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 Because a thing that, um, like, like, like you said, the, a lot of people come out the Horeca school and they think that the standards are just the standards that they know, that they learned from, in the, from the school. Yeah. 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 And it, it's not like that. Like no, everywhere you go is a different standard. Yeah. It's a different way of working. Um, yeah. No, that's true. And everywhere I worked is something else. You, you learn something new and you just have to um, I would say like uh, not like not combined, but get you, used to the, the, you the have way to, of working. Like again, like I said, like you need to learn from your previous experiences, yeah. right? But also be open to new experiences. Yes, and I think that's where you're going towards. Yeah, it's like exactly. you want to be like open, like okay, this is what I learned, mm -hmm. and then they're doing it this way. Yeah. Okay, cool. Maybe we can find a middle way because I mean. As a, like from us, from our, from number ten, like I mean, like like I said, like none of us have hoika or a hospitality um, experience or to run a hospitality. So we're doing things that we think is the right yeah. way, but it might not. There might be better ways. So I mean, a lot of people that are coming in, it's like, hey, this is how I used to be do do it. Yeah. Okay, and then you start to look. Okay, hey, maybe they're right. Maybe we can implement that as yeah. well. You know, and and so it's 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 from both sides. You yeah. need to be open to change. Exactly. One thing, if yes. you're, you're you work, you're owning a business, you know the work how it runs. Yeah. If you go, let's say, to a restaurant and it's packed, it's busy, do you get pissed for waiting thirty minutes to forty five minutes no. for food? No, I I understand. Like okay. when you when you when you when you have a Especially Horeca business. I think this is for everyone. Yeah. It's like whether you have an accountancy um, or a, a shipping company that does mm -hmm. import-export, you understand your business, right? You yeah. understand what space you're in. Yeah, exactly. And for us, I'm, I'm pretty sure you have, you have the same thing. It's like if you go to a bar and it's packed, mm -hmm. you understand what it takes for that drink to come out. Yeah, yeah. So you, un like, again, if it takes 45 minutes and no one has come to the table... I'm gonna get pissed. Yeah. That, that's not a thing. Like, that's yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that that's something else. Yeah. But if 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 it takes 45 minutes for food to come out, but I have had people come up to me, hey, um, is everything okay? Would you like another drink? Yeah. Yada yada yada. That, that that's fine. Yeah, I exactly. mean, that's just part of the experience, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I understand when a kitchen falls behind. I understand when a f bar uh, falls behind. Yeah. It's just how it is. How yeah, it yeah. is. I mean. You can't you can't expect more if it's packed. Yeah, and if you do, I'm sorry, but there's the freaking door. <laughs> no, but it's the same thing. It's it's at number ten as well. It's like people have certain expectations yeah. that they want their food within 20 minutes. Yeah. If we're packed, I can guarantee you that you're not going to get your food in 20 minutes because it's not possible. Yeah. I mean, we do fresh food. Like I mean, we make everything. Um, um, at the time, um, and it just it just takes a little bit of time. Like if we're if we don't have a lot of orders, yeah, man, food gets out in like twelve, thirteen minutes. Yeah, like, yeah beautiful, awesome. I like it, smooth, smooth, smooth. But when it's lunch rush, mm -hmm. like don't expect it. Yeah, yeah, just, really don't. And and the the thing is like um, it's very important for for the waiters yeah. to keep on their tables, like stay on the table, stay on, yes. stay like. Are you guys need something to drink, like like you said, or um, the kitchen's a little behind? You guys want some chips or anything? Yes. Like you, you know, something to just keep on nibbling on, so yes. you you don't like get that, you don't become hangry. But, you know, but, but that's <laughs> the thing. Like and 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 the biggest thing that you can do, and this is what I learned at Apple, is 
you need to inform. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if a, cl- a customer is like, hey, um, can you take, take a look on the food? Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Hey, they're, they're working on it. Um, we're running a little bit behind, uh, behind. It'll be out in 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes, as long as the customer knows what's going on. Yeah. Hey, um, it's busy, um, yada, yada, yada. This is what's happening. Yeah. Um, the coffee is being, um, we have ice, like the ice that you mentioned. Yeah. We steep it, we make it ourselves, we steep it and everything. So sometimes we run out because mm-hmm. we need to steep. And the yeah. steeping doesn't like, I don't put it in and it magically <laughs> appears at the bottom. It's like ready in like two <laughs> seconds. No, it takes four or five minutes to steep. Yeah. Right. So if you have a shit ton of icy orders, like people are going to have to wait, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. You know, and so people are like, hey, what's going on? I ordered this 10 minutes ago. Why is it not here yet? Yeah. Um, it's steeping, sir. Um, it'll be out shortly. You know, get them to I, understand I, yeah. the why. Yeah. Why I, I, is I've it taking so I've been through that at number 10. Yeah. Like, like I, I, because my, my girlfriend, uh, um, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, ordered also a cappuccino. She yeah. ordered, she got it. I'm like, where the fuck is my, my iced tea? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. where the fuck is my iced tea? Like, you know, I, 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 you just gotta, I just gotta know what's, what's right. I just ask. Yeah. And she's like, no, no. It, it, it ran out. We're making it. I'm like, oh, oh, cool, yeah. cool. Give me a water, just yeah. just to you know. Hold and, on, yeah. and, and and that's and, and but that's the attentiveness of the staff that you need mm-hmm. as well. As, um, I mean, we have a lot of new staff at the moment, yeah. so you're constantly training, training, yeah. training. And it's hard to, to train it, when yeah, it's busy. Man. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, <laughs> but it is what we have, and um, we finally we're finally now to a point where we have enough staff up front that we can finally start training people. And yeah. it's, but it it took us two months. Like since mm-hmm. we opened, it took us two months to find people. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not. It, it didn't take it two months to find people. But it take it two months to find like the right, that yes, the right people exactly. to work. Yeah, because you get so many like. You know what? That's also something that I want to get into, uh, but I don't want to get into. Um, let's get into let's it. Let's get man. into it. Yeah, yeah. It's let's get into it. No people worries. on and, and and I don't know where that is going wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't know how to set up a resume, or people don't know how to approach when they're finding looking for a job. Yeah. It's, for example, it's middle in the rush. It's like 12, 30, 1 o'clock. We're jam-packed. Yeah. And someone walks in and says, hey, I'm looking for a job. Here's my resume. Can we sit down? And it's like, lady, look around you. I don't have time. And if, as, as, at that point, if you don't see that and you don't mm-hmm. understand that, yeah. then, then it's not for yeah, you. Yeah. You know? Or we get, we get, like, for example, we get a resume that's been CC'd to like everyone. So you see like, like it's, it's, it's like, it's like forwarded and you see like the, the entire chart. Everybody. So you see everyone that's been added to it. And it just, it doesn't come over professionally. No. You might no. be the best server ever. Mm-hmm. You can, but if that comes across, that's, that is my first impression of you. Yeah. And if that's my first impression, then I'm sorry, but I'm going to see someone that has maybe a little bit of nicer yeah. round out CV and I'm going to hire less that person. It's yeah, less, less, uh, less uh, experience, but yeah. Yeah, but so it's just because that extra thought went into it and, it's, and, and for me, that's, it's difficult because you need to find the diamond in the rough and everything. Exactly. But you look, you, unfortunately, when you're hiring, you judge a book by its cover. Yeah. The, first yeah. Im- the first impression that you get, that's, the, that's what's going to stick, unfortunately. Exactly, yeah. And I don't know where it goes wrong on the island, but we see a lot of it. We see a lot where it just doesn't, it does, it's just not presented properly. Yeah. Um, and it gets sent, for example, just like a little written, written page with like, this is my experience. No, it's just like presented properly. Yeah. You know? Get it, it, um, put a time into it and make a proper yeah. CV. If you don't know how to make it, just ask anybody ask, else. There's so many resources. Exactly. Google uh, is a big th- thing. But that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, I mean... It, you can get free, de- like free templates. Yeah, and you just, exactly. And you just fill out the template. Yeah. And and like you, like it's it's Google. I mean, ev- like yeah. again, I c- you c- people that don't have internet connection. Like I mean, I yeah. understand, but I mean, you can go. I'm pretty sure you, right across from us, right over here, you have the bibliotheque. Bibliotheque. Yeah, you got a uh, you, you, lab um, computer there. You can. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and it's it's that if you want it, mm-hmm. you'll put in that extra time. Exactly. And if that extra time doesn't get reflected, then I know you're not really interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you, man. I get you. And it's, for, for me, it's uh, just like you said. And also, I, sometimes I prefer people that doesn't have a lot of experience so I can build on that. You can mold them. Yeah, exactly. How you want. Yes. How you will and how you did. And because... 
me myself, I loved it when um, I went to work at different places and people were like, no, you got to do it this way, you got to do that. And for me, it's experiencing and you, you build your own character from yeah. all the places you worked, you know? But that's the thing. Yeah, and some people are like, yeah, it, it, they have all this experience and they come like uptight and they're like, yeah. Like, I, everything you say is like, fuck you. <laughs> 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 no, but that's the thing. And, and, and that's also difficult because you want, like, they believe they know everything yeah. and they're not open to change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I had that many times, man. It's, yeah, I can it, 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 it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's as, hard. As, especially in the hotel industry. <laughs> like, like, you and, get that. <laughs> and, and, and the hotel industry is just like, they hire whatever, whenever, yeah. whatever. They just throw yeah. people in on you and it's like, yeah, you got to train them. Yeah, and it's it's not easy to no man train somebody that a uh, know it all. Let's say that because they believe they know it all. Yeah, and and they believe like hey, and and that's fine. It's fine if you understand and know, mm-hmm. but be open to how we do things. Yeah, yeah. Like be and open how how you make your cocktails, yeah. for example, or be open how you serve. Or yeah, and it, it the the thing is um, for me, I don't mind um, learning from people that's young in this industry or older i don't mind learning from anybody yeah it's just um you know something maybe you you started two years ago yeah. and you you know something that i don't know i, I don't mind but that's difficult especially because i mean uh, how old are you now 25 25 i'm 29 <laughs> like we have people that are older than us that yeah. you need to train or that you need to oh, and that, that is so yeah that yeah it's difficult For me too. it's difficult yeah, man. man it's it, I, I i don't like that no, like your confrontation i mean we were like... we were born on an island where you you have respect for your elderly right exactly yes so i mean we have employees that are older than me yeah. and it's just like it's just it's difficult because you need to find that you need to have that respect but also have that authority yeah. and and demand that the, it, it's difficult yeah you, you, you yeah. just just yeah, yeah. man it's <laughs> Oh man, it, it's it's so hard to to get to that like balance. Yeah. From respect to um, like uh, I say it like authority. Like authority, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like like you said. Yeah. And it's it's so hard because sometimes you're a supervisor, you're a manager, or you're owning a business, but you're a young entrepreneur, and people you hire people you know they have experience but yeah. you want to train them but it's, it's you, you it's, don't want to train you know what I mean like oh it's man it's difficult it's yeah, difficult it's, it's something that you yeah. it's, it's hard to get to get through man fuck yeah, yeah. damn <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it's, it's, a, it's a, little, a little flashback for me like yeah it's, it's uh, you know what and it's just how we are, and then and, and unfortunately, um, we're grown up that way on the island. Like yeah. we have respect, we have certain morals on the island, and exactly. you see that relate in a lot of people that you come across. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just have to overcome it. And it's just like okay, like there is a professional, div- like a uh, part of it, but there's yeah. also like a um, moral. I yeah. think yeah, mm-hmm. moral part of it. Like so, how do you combine? Combine and those, those yeah. yeah. Shit. Yeah, man. Ah, yeah. Yeah, come to it. Yeah, So let, let's get into the last phase. Okay. Nil Twinter. Do you guys have any. No, not Nil no, Twinter. Sorry, 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 sorry. I cut that shit out. Sorry, man. <laughs> sorry, man. It's a, it's, it's a booze. No worries. No worries. Uh, number 10. Yes. People, you, a lot of people get that confused, yeah. by the way. Yeah. It, it's. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I love Nil Twinter, by the way. Good for Yeah, yeah. But number 10. Yes. Do you guys have any plans for the future of like maybe? Yeah, man. And, and you know what? F- funny thing. COVID um, was either, has, either a su- has been a support with that, but mm-hmm. also a damper with that. Okay. Um, we, we've been trying to expand for the last year, year and a half now. Okay. Um, we when you walk into number ten, yeah. um, we used to only have half of the building and the patio, right? Yeah, and uh-huh. the other half used to be a um, na- nature historic museum. Uh-huh. It's like a natural museum, museum, <laughs> and it's basically on on the creation of Curacao. Okay, it was cool and everything, yeah. um, but we were because they had half of the building. We were pretty much like. Locked in. This is this is as much as we can handle because mm-hmm. we can't grow. Exactly. Um, so we started looking elsewhere. Um, we started looking here in Peter Mai, um, somewhere else. We even looked abroad. See, okay, maybe we can go abroad. And then COVID hit, and then it's like, okay, well, we can't go abroad because <laughs> we can't find a spot there. <laughs> um, Peter Mai, okay, yeah, fun. 
Um, so we started focusing a little bit on Peter Mai. Um, and then our neighbors decided, due to COVID, they're going to go back to Holland. What neighbors? So the, the, nature, the museum was oh. like, okay, we're going to go to Holland. So that whole part of the building opened up for us. So we said, okay, fuck it. S- screw like finding a second location. Let's expand on our current location. Exactly. Um, and that's what we did. So now we have the whole house. Um, we have a meeting room in there, which is going to be opening up soon. So oh, if you nice. want private meetings with like projectors or I everything. I can set up my podcast there. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of coffee. <laughs> Um, so we have like, and, and, and corporate clients can mm-hmm. rent it out. Um, we're also in the process of maybe looking into seeing how we can maybe harness the takeout more and find a separate area for that. Yeah. We're just like primarily takeout. Okay. Nice. Um, and we built a deck because we got the space COVID hit and we weren't allowed indoor seating. So, so we, it's, like, it's like, okay, what can we do? We had some pellets laying around. So, okay, we're going to build our own deck. So we built a deck and we created um, about 10 extra seats Shit. or a table. So times that by two to three. Yeah. So you, and that's how we expand it. Um, nice, man. And right now where we're at, um, I mean, I think we're pretty much at max capacity what the bar can handle and what the kitchen can handle. Um, and then, yeah. I would love for us to expand into mm-hmm. maybe a second location, um, expand to the mm-hmm. other islands. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Like, in that's that's a chain. A chain. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a chain because I don't want to become a McDonald's or a Starbucks. <laughs> um, I, I want it to be a its own thing, mm-hmm. but falls under the same group as Number yeah. Ten, so it has the same. Um, what you expect. So if you come into number 10 and then you go, let's say, for example, you go to number 11 <laughs> and God knows we're in Costa Rica, for yeah. example. <laughs> um, and you go in, it's like, oh, man, it's the same shit. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, you know, the ambiance is the same, the sphere is the same, yeah. the people are the same, you know? And yeah. then that's kind of what I want to build. Nice. Um, my idea, I, I'm not a chef. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I love cooking and I love being in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, but I want to expand. I want to see where where we can grow. So I would love to create like a little umbrella mm-hmm. and then have like some small. Yeah. 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 I get you, man. And I, I, th- I think, you know, as soon as you just distinguish yourself as one thing, mm-hmm. um, it's like you can be a chef, but then just don't focus just on on one food. Yeah. Focus on everything. Exactly. You know, and then yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. You, you have it. Right, <laughs> spot on, man. But yeah. is it is it for? It, I always have this like uh, questions and uh, question in my head. Like, yeah. always when a, a restaurant or a business try to expand, making another one, like let's say yeah. number um, number ten two point oh two point oh yeah. It 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 splits your, I would say. It, it splits your, your, your guests. Yes, and that's, and that's why on the island... And it's not that... No. You know. And that's why on the island, I believe we're, we're too small on the island for you to do the exact same copy of what you're already mm-hmm. doing. Exactly. So if, you're gonna, if, you, if you plan on opening something else as a business owner and you have already a restaurant, yeah. you cannot open the exact same thing somewhere no. else. Because what's going to happen, we're too small. So what you're going to happen is people are like, okay... Um, let's say you have 100 clients, 50 clients are going to branch out because the other place is closer by. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you might reach an extra 10 other people, but you're your taking cost. away, yeah, your cost is increasing. You're mm-hmm. taking away from your primary baby, ba- yeah. basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's one of the um, reasons why we also decided against um, yeah, opening gotcha. a spot in Peter Mai. Um, not that it's never going to happen or never. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not that we've put it out of our minds, but it's just if we put something here, we're going to lose the people that are coming this, all the way to exactly, Santa Rosa. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you need if, if you're going to open something here, oh, have the same feeling, have the same vibe, but yeah. do something different. Exactly. Um, maybe you do it into like a Mexican team, for example, yeah. but you have like the same like... Mm-hmm. Like Instagram the foods, same, comfortable, the, yeah. like that. The you, same vibe. You, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Um, 
but but that's and then I think what you notice that as well is like no one has two locations. Yeah. Every, if there's a second location, I mean, if if you look at um, a couple of restaurants that have second locations, the second location closed down. Yeah. Or the first location closed down, and they're focusing on just one. Yeah. Um, or it's a completely different concept. True. True. And and that's the I think the best way to go because a lot of that that <coughs> that's the, sorry that, that that's that's what really why I asked like. Yeah. You don't want to open on the island. Let's no. say you want to open in Aruba, Bonaire, Haiti, whatever. Yeah. But not on the island the same concept because... It, I don't it, think it'll, it'll work. No. It's a key for the Yeah. So it's so, so that, 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 that's the thing. Yeah. And the thing is, like, when you open a second location, it's also like you're splitting your... Like, I mean, it's nice that we have four people, five people that are really like running number 10. Yeah. Um, and you can... If you open a second one, you can split it up. Yeah. And it's... And, you'll still be able to manage and you'll still be able to run seconds. But if you, as a business owner, let's say, for example, you open, um, I don't know, uh, let's say Bob's Place, for example. Yeah. Bob's Burgers, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and it's just you. Yeah. You're running it. You're the sole owner. And now you want to open Bob's Burgers too. Mm -hmm. You need to find someone that you trust enough yeah. to be able to run that place as well because exactly. you're not just running one you're not running two yeah. so you need to get step up and you need to have two people that are like yeah. and, and and that's difficult exactly yeah you're you now have to split your energy in two mm -hmm. and yeah it's, it's going to be it's 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 going to be a pain yeah like like we all like, like like we said like about the buying produce and all those stuff it's it's going to become even worse yeah and and you know what like rene from uh, barbecue express mm -hmm. he's doing it really well um yeah. he he has now i think it's four he has two trucks he has the two restaurants um and then he just opened in aruba oh shit really? yeah man And that shit is booming from what I heard. Really? Yeah, lines out of the door. Oh, yeah. shit. Um, so it's, it's, you need to find, like, I, I think he's managed in a way where, but he does it with family as well. I, yeah. Like his brothers or his cousins are running mm -hmm. certain aspects of the business. Yeah. And because you need that trust. You can't just have you anyone can, yeah. doing something. No, you need to trust that person for them to manage that specific part of yeah. the business. Yeah. Especially when you have four or five places. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know, but for me, sometimes, um, managing so much places at a time, um, it's hard if you don't trust the person and if, yeah. if the person is not on point, yeah. you will lose a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Just by, yeah, <laughs> for two months, a month, uh, you can lose it's, a lot of money. You lose, not, not only what gets taken out of your till, but, <laughs> like, but also, like, just people forgetting stuff or clients yeah. being upset. Because mm -hmm. the biggest thing is, like, I mean, you're going to always lose money. Yeah. I mean, that, unfortunately, and in, in, the, in the hospitality, you're going to have times where a customer doesn't pay enough or whatever. So you're always going to have that little bit where... Yeah. It, Money trickles away. Where it goes, God knows. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you need to be able to manage it, yeah. right? Minimize it. Mm -hmm. How are we going to minimize that loss? Exactly. Put the right people in the right positions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's absolutely right, man. You're absolutely yeah. right. Because it's, it's really hard. Like, people are always, they're ordering stuff. Let's say, let's go back into food and drinks. People always order stuff. And do you always... Once in a while, of a lot of the times, for food, um, especially I've, I've seen it, um, they send it back. Yeah. Because it's too salty. Yeah. It's too sweet. Um, I don't eat almonds. I'm, I'm allergic. allergic. Yeah. I'm vegetarian. It's, I, it's, it's, it's something that it's people. It's difficult. Yeah. Man. That's really for food difficult. wise, I, I feel the, you guys are pain. Your, yeah. your pain is like f fucking hard because. Yeah. There's so much allergies, so much things going on, and you know what? Like, it's I agree, but be upfront as 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 a customer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, my wife has a peanut allergy. Okay, yeah. Um, so everywhere we go, I mean, she hates it, but but we have to tell, like, inform, hey, we have a peanut and nut allergy. Yeah. And so the kitchen knows. I want to inform them yeah. that if I get something and it's and it's it has something in it, if they don't know, then I mean, I'm sending dishes back, and that is 
waste of food. It's a waste of their money. Exactly. You know, so be upfront with them. Like, hey, mm-hmm. I don't eat this. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We'll work around it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what we have at number 10. It's like, it's like, hey, like, please advise us if you have any allergies. Yeah. Because if you have a nut allergy, we're going to keep away the nuts. Because a lot of people don't understand what goes into an allergy. Mm-hmm. Um, as a restaurant, like, I mean, when we get an order in that has a nut allergy or a onion allergy or God knows what kind of allergy, we sanitize the entire surface. Sure. Yeah, okay. man. Because I cannot have them informing me and then the client or the guest has an allergic reaction and, then and that it's on, it, that's, yeah. that's on me. Mm-hmm. So we sanitize it completely. And then it's like, so the, the workspace where, where that specific dish is going to get prepped, gets sanitized. Yeah. Um, because you don't want to have run into that risk. Exactly. Um, so I'd rather have it up front knowing, because mm-hmm. if, I get the, if I get to know about it afterwards, that means that the tickets I'm working on right now, it's got to it's, wait. It's, it's got to wait till yeah. it gets pushed back. So and then I have to sanitize and then we, yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah, some some people don't understand that, but yeah. But uh, you know what? And and a client, a lot of client guests, I keep going back to clients, but <laughs> a lot of guests don't understand how much effort goes into a business. Why yeah. are prices the way they are? Exactly. Because you have staff, you have a location, you have dishes, you have plates, you have investments, you have collector. Uh, 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 collector. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, like why don't you have more AC? Like we have plenty of AC, but like I mean, if it's on, like I mean, there's so many other costs exactly. that come with it, you know, and and. It's 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 nice when some people understand it, but nine out of ten times they don't understand, understand it. it. Yeah. For 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 me, I prefer. Let's say I go to Kome, I go to to you guys to number ten. I go to all the places that I I prefer to pay a amount. Yeah. That I know I'm getting good food. Yeah. I don't mind waiting a lot because um, if it's super busy, I know how it goes. But yeah. I prefer paying the money that. I, 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 the you amount, see value. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know the process. I know how much effort you guys put into the food and yeah. the drinks and everything. So I don't mind paying that much. But I've seen people, I've um, worked with people and also um, clients or guests that, that, that came to the restaurant and, and bar that they don't understand. They, yeah. they just want to pay Less because they just like yeah I just I, order for some, something the, easy. The the thing I hate the most is when someone says I can make it cheaper at home. Yeah, make yeah. It, then then go home and make it cheaper exactly. at home. Exactly. You don't get the ambiance. You don't get the service. You don't get the drinks. You don't get everything. Which is like mm-hmm. you need to understand is like what you're paying for something like as 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 a as someone that lives at home and is gonna cook at home like let's say for example you're gonna cook a ribeye steak. Yeah. That ribeye steak is gonna cost you what about sixty five guilders a kilo. Yeah. I'm paying just as much as you're paying, but I'm adding the location, the yeah. seats, the service, the drinks, the AC, yeah. and everything. That also costs something. Exactly. So I'm going to implement that in my price. And they don't understand that. No, they don't. That's, it's, it's a pain. It's, it's, it's not, not, not a lot of people. Like There's, some, there's yeah. some people that complain about it. Uh, that's fair. They can complain. But it's just like you need to understand why we set the price that we are Mm -hmm. because if i set them lower then that lovely place that you like to go to doesn't exist anymore (laughs) i mean i can put a closed sign and i can like like, you know like at the end of the day um i love doing what i'm doing Mm -hmm. but i also want to make money right as a business owner as an entrepreneur you're not doing it for the for 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 the good cause oh i'm feeding people yeah and i'm I'm working 80 hours a week Mm -hmm. because i want to see that smile on that customer no i'm also doing it because i want a future for myself exactly right i want a future for my family i want a future for so you build something and unfortunately there's a price tag that goes on top of that that's true man. like if i if i break even then what what am i doing it for (laughs) yeah yeah, it's right? if, if you don't get anything out of it, no, it's nothing. We're, we're working for freedom. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but some people <laughs> want that. <laughs> no man, so. I, I I totally get it. I yeah. totally get it. So we we were going, we're talking for a, a we, while, I, I and it's not like stopping. For, yeah. so <laughs> I think it's time we gotta cut this. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, but just um for everybody to know, Chris loves Bobby's gin. Oh, I we do, we yes. didn't get the chance to, to drink Bobby's, yes. but so every bartender out there, you see him, 
Yeah, Bobby's gin. Bobby's gin. Yes. Even Orange, if, even, cloves. Yeah, you got it. And, and even if you <laughs> even even if you want to make a cocktail with it, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Here at Ochenta, I get my cocktails with Bobby gin. <laughs> and, and when, when we see you like walking up the steps, like yeah, we were already preparing it. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? One thing. One thing I want to say as well. It's like it's like always anywhere that like you guys now starting Ochenta, yeah. and I really love it. I really feel the vibe and everything. Thank you. It man. has the same vibe as it ha- as Luke's used to have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think Fabian has as some part to play in that yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing. Like as soon as I walk up the stairs here, it's like my drink is getting made. Yeah. And it's the same thing there. It's like I drive down and my drink is getting made. <laughs> so you're like, oh shit, it's Chris. Okay, okay, like, okay let's, let's, let's start, guys. Let's start. Yeah, no, no, it's nice, man. It's, I, it's, uh, it's so cool. Yeah. I want to thank you for having me on here. No, it, man. Uh, it was a, it was a pleasure. Yeah. It was, uh, Thank you I, for for coming yeah, on, on a Sunday. It's a man, Sundays are my days off. <laughs> <laughs> and look at you, we were drinking gin tonics. <laughs> I love it. You drink like what do they say? No, um, you gotta enjoy while you're working, right? Exactly. So, yeah. Like, yeah. Let's have some gins. Yeah, of course. Have some whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you very much, man, for being on this podcast. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. And, uh, I, I really, and also shout you out a little bit. Yeah. I really love that you're doing this. Thank you, man. Thank it's, you. Um, it's nice to have something else. Like, I mean, I listen to podcasts, especially about around hospitality, and it's yeah. nice to have something local. Yeah, yeah. You know, and especially local people, local mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, local chefs. It's, it's, it's nice to see what they're doing yeah. as well. And, and that was the whole idea why I come with this podcast. Yeah. For, um, for, because us in Horeca, we, all, we are busy. Yeah. We don't get the chance a lot to go to different restaurants, yeah. try different food on the island. And it's cool to have those type of bartenders, um, oh, I agree. Um, chefs to come on and they can show the experience and you can know where they come from, you know? Yeah. So that that's why the, the thought for, for this podcast. No, really cool, about. really cool. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you. So, so guys, thank you very much for, being, uh, for joining us on this uh, episode of Baby Kumi. Um, I'm very thankful for Chris being on this podcast. Very, very thankful. Thank you. And yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, as you guys know, our main sponsor is Sir Admins Vanilla Flavored Gin. Delicious. Very delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very delicious. Yeah, the vanilla comes out yeah, really, really nice. nice. Yeah. And a shout out to everybody that we mentioned. Yes. Yeah. It's a very big list. Yeah, a very big list. Very, very big list. Uh, and thank you very much for being on this podcast. So for joining us on this podcast, guys. See you guys next time. Cheers. Deuces.